Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to do something a little different. I'm gonna go over solvent pop, uh, causes and easy fixes for it. Um, it's something I wish I would have had when I was younger. I started painting over 30 years ago and of course we didn't have YouTube or anything like that. So it was trial and error for me and I remember having these problems and it's actually a pretty easy fix. There's usually a few of the main things that cause it. And I'll go over that and we'll go from there. Thanks for checking it out. All right, first of all, what is solvent pop? Solvent pop happens when the solvent is trapped within the layer of paint and it cannot escape. And what I mean by that is Say this is your substrate, your whatever, your fender, your hood, all ready for paint. And then you put this first coat of paint on it, and this is your first, point, first coat of paint. And inside this, you have all this solvent. All solvent is, when you're in your base coat and your clear coat, it's a means of transportation. It's a, it's a way to get the base coat or clear coat to the vehicle without, you know, if you didn't have reducer in it, it would be a thick, chunky mess. So this reduces it and it helps get it on the vehicle. But that's all it is, is really, it helps orient the metallics and stuff but its, its main focus is to get onto the substrate in an atomized pattern. Otherwise, you'd have all these chunks up here. So you get this first coat of paint on and all this solvent is in here and it needs to escape. And how that does that is it evaporates through the top. All that solvent evaporates that way when it's done correctly. But, what does happen, and what happens to cause this, is you have this layer of paint on here with all this solvent in here. And sometimes, one of the reasons is you put it on, too thick. This happens especially with clear coat. Um, you, you lay it on too thick and then this top layer skims before all this can escape. So all this solvent is trying to get out through the top but it can't because it's skimmed over already because this stuff is on too thick but this top layer from all your air movement is already starting to skim over. So when it gets to there, it stops. It looks good at the time, but then you, the next morning you come and this has to escape somehow. So what it does is it pops through that layer and that's where you get all these blisters. And that's, that's one reason why you get solvent pop. That's a big reason though. How do we fix that? Thinner coats. Put on a thinner coat. If you spray heavy handed and you're spraying with a 1.3 tip, I would recommend going to a smaller tip. I'd go to a 1.2. That way you're gonna go on thinner and you have less of a chance with this clear coat like this. This is something I would recommend to try, but thinner for sure, try that. And if not, try a 1.2 tip. That should take care of it for the clear coat. As with anything though, always let it flash before the second coat. You have to let it flash 
this goes for base coat and clear coat. Because what happens is you get that on here, and then it's pretty much the same thing as having it on too thick. You have all this solvent in here, and it's escaping, but if you don't let it all escape, some of it escapes, you get your second coat on there, and then it tries to come through there. So now you have all this trying to escape from the bottom, plus all of your solvent from the second coat. So there's no way all that's gonna escape, so you're gonna get pinholes. It's, it's gonna come through. So if you're putting it on too thick, there we go. Thinner coats, smaller tip. That should take care of it for that part. All right, let's go on to the next one. I already covered it pretty much, but it's improper flash times. Improper flash. You have to give it enough time. Do not rush. When you rush things, you're just asking for problems. It may look good at the time, but the next day you're gonna come back and see that this isn't gonna work. And with solvent pop, unlike dieback, but dieback, most of the time you can buff it out. But solvent pop, you're you're bursting through, you're, you're bursting through the, the layer. So you have like blisters, pinholes, and, and there's no way to buff that out. You have to, uh, you have to give proper flash times and just don't rush it. The biggest cause, what I find, and I think this goes for me when I was younger, is incorrect hardener and reducer. Either or. What happens here is, it's the same thing every time. You get the same outcome. There's your substrate, whatever you're painting. You get a layer on it with all this solvent in here that needs to escape. And you went too fast of a hardener or reducer. What happens is if you go too fast, this top layer skims off before all this reducer can escape. So, and that, that's for, uh, for clear coat. Also for, uh, for base coat too, especially with the reducer, is it, it, you've got to make sure that it's slow enough so it has time, it stays open to evaporate. If it doesn't stay open, this happens. The top layer gets dry, feels dry, looks dry, but you have all these trap solvents in here and they're gonna come out at some point. So what you have to do is make sure you have the correct hardener and reducer. I always say slower is better. If you have a slower hardener, this is gonna stay open longer. Same thing with the reducer. You need to slow it down so this top layer stays open. If it doesn't stay open and it skims off, it's all gonna pop through. I mean, it's a pretty easy fix. All this solvent, just think of it this way, all this solvent needs to come out. You can't trap it inside. So if we go over everything, We're gonna do 
thinner, even colds. And then we're gonna make sure we have the correct flash time. I sure hope you guys can read all this. And then we need to have correct hardener and reducer for whatever temperature job you're doing. The hotter it is, the slower you need to go. The hotter and more air movement in the booth, you need to slow it down. And when I say slow it down, that's with this. Harder and reducer, you need to slow it down. Make sure you have the right flash times. Thin, even coats. And just don't rush. Don't rush it. And I can, I will bet you that this will take care of your solvent pump problem if you're having it. So please just check this out. I know it was kind of spur of the moment here and my drawing sucks, but if you know the reasons behind it, it's not that hard to fix. So if you're getting solvent pop, try these. Let me know if this helped you. I'll do one on dieback too. And whatever else I can think of, or if you guys can think of anything, um, let me know. I've been doing this for 30 some years, and I do have experience. Um, I worked for Sickens as a tech rep, so I went in to solve problems. So I like this part of it. So let me know if this works for you and I will catch you on the next one. Thanks for checking it out.